Did you know that the Bible says you are his workmanship? I want to look at that today in perhaps quite a, uh, a different way but God has shown me to do and I think you'll be blessed by this. It starts in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 it says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as the others he says there that we once walked according to the prince of the power of the air who's that? the devil before we got saved we walked the devil's way we did his things we walked according to the flesh we conducted ourselves in the, a lustful way not necessarily sexually lustful but a lustful way as in I want it my way and I want it now kind of feeling just like everybody else did everybody else was doing the same sort of thing but we have been made alive we read there who were once dead in our sins there is no one on earth excluded from that statement everybody was dead in their trespasses and sins except Jesus and he went into death for our sakes it's because we once walked the way of the devil that he can still wants to drag us back into it that's why he can tempt us back into there because we once were there he's not tempting you into something new when he tries to get you to sin he's tempting you back into something you once did to get you back in there because he doesn't like you I don't know if you know that I don't know if you heard that song I remember Jesse sang it on something we watched recently the devil and I are both in agreement you know that? I hate him and he hates me you know and he does he absolutely abhors you and wants to do the best he can to totally destroy you and everything positive about you say but God but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved I love it when it says that in the Bible but God but Jesus but then we know that God changes things we've already heard a testimony two testimonies about God changing things actually three testimonies my goodness we've had wonderful testimonies this morning about God changing things and blessing people even before when we were still sinners still disgusting looking to God because if he looked at us through our eye we would look pretty grotty yeah he sent Jesus to pay the price so that we could be free and set free from that and just as Jesus was made alive by his resurrection we are made alive with him we are made alive with him if he was never raised from the dead we can't be either but he was and we are in Jesus name and we are saved by grace it's nothing to do with us it's nothing to do with our lives or how good we are I actually could name people who think they have to work and work and work at being good Christians to be acceptable to God and hopefully if they do enough good things they'll go to heaven when they die a very good friend of mine who was a minister in this town years ago I died some, some years ago he was, I said, well at least we're all going to heaven he said, well I hope I am I said, don't you read the Bible? I said, well yeah, yeah, but I'm not sure, I'm not really sure that I'm he was still trying to work at it to be good enough to go to heaven you can't be good enough to go to heaven you have to accept that Jesus has paid the price for your sin and everything and now you're clean and can, be, can go there it's wonderful and then he goes on in Ephesians 
and he's raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. In the spirit, some of you, I'm stood up now, the rest of you here are sat down. You are sat down in the building in Warminster in England. At the same time though, in the spirit, you are seated together with Jesus in heaven. You're already in heaven, we're just going to move our bodies there eventually, that's all. You are seated together in heavenly places in Christ, now. And in the ages to come, all the time between now and when he comes back for us, he's going to show how graceful he is to us, how gracious he is to us, show the riches he's got, because he wants to bless us, because he loves us. I love that. God loves us. Why does this happen? Because in verse 8 it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Even the faith that we use to trust him and believe in him to get saved, he gave us. Nobody can say, well I got more faith than you. No, you might be operating in it more often than other people or you might be reaching out for bigger things than other people but it's the same amount of faith, we are all dealt the same measure of faith. We've all got it, but we were given it. We didn't have it ourselves. So we can't brag on, oh well, I had so much faith I was able to believe God. Yeah, you had so much faith, but he gave it to you. It wasn't your own. Now we come to the verse that I mentioned in the first place. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, for years, I read this these scripture and just bypassed that word completely, workmanship, and then one day we got hold of a a computer program called the Online Bible <clears throat> and I've been using that ever since and I can look it up in the Strong's Concordance. I press the letter S on my keyboard and all the little numbers come up behind all the words. And if you press the word, the number that comes up behind workmanship, in the Greek it's the word poema. It means that which has been made, it's a work. What does it really mean? You are God's poem. We are his poem. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I don't know how many of you <coughs> are pretty, any poetic or, or you like poems or anything like that. I do remember doing that kind of stuff uh, at school. I remember being taught how to construct poems about stanzas and all this kind of thing. Uh, and I've, I've done it a few times, I've written a few poems in my life um, it was a tremendous advantage to me at one time writing poetry because I would write poetry and I would write them and give a, my poems to Janet and Janet thought that I was a believer because I used words like God and eternity what she didn't know is they rhymed that's why I used those words I didn't mean it, I wasn't a Christian but if eternity fitted, I would use it, you know? And if salvation fitted, I would use it. I didn't know about being born again, I didn't know, if, I, if I'd known about that phrase, I might have used that as well. And I wasn't trying to do it to con her, I was just trying to make it rhyme, you know? And because of that, I've got the love of my life, my wife Janet, bless her. So, the poetry does play a part in things even though it's a bit of a con at the time because <laughs> you're only doing it because it's right. Now I want, to, I want to show you something about poetry that you might not have realised before because you need to know a bit about poetry before you can understand that statement you are God's poem. I'm going to show you three poetic extracts in a moment and I'm going to read them out and when we get to the dotted lines I want you to, write, to tell me what the word is, okay? and it tells you who they are. This is William Wordsworth. 
I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or vales and hills. And all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden... Wow! You knew it! Wonderful! Why did you know that? Why did you know that? It's not just because you remembered it. I'll show you in a minute. It's not just because you remembered it. I'll show you something else. Look at this one then. The Owl and the Pussycat by Edward Lear. The Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green. Exactly. This is, you're going to see why this is all really important in a minute. Let's have a look at the last one. One of Sonnets by William Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. One of our favourite programmes, that. That was on the television years ago. We've still got the DVDs and occasionally we watch them again and again. Because they're, they're, they're lovely, lovely stories. So what is the key here? Why did you know then? How come, how come, you may, some of you may have seen that saw those, I'll start with that. Some of you may have heard those poems and read those poems absolutely years ago. Now I knew these poems anyway quite a bit. But I decided to pick these up and rather than, in case I got the words wrong, I copied them off the internet and just pasted them into there for you to see. How come it is that these years now, after you first heard it, the words are still the same. How, how is it? I mean, some of you are old, a couple of you are older than me, but not many. Yeah, uh, I'm 72 years old. Am I? 72, 73. Yeah, 72 years old this year. I have to think about that. Okay. And I first heard, I think, uh, certainly... Uh, the Owl and the Pussycat, for instance. I heard that one when I was at school. So let's say I heard that 55 years ago, say. 60 years ago. How is it that 60 years ago I heard that and I checked online and the words are exactly the same now? Because if it's a poem, the words never ever change. Once they are written, they are always the same. Are you getting something here? Yeah? I mean, nowadays, people have been reading it, the Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green, I know, catamaran or something, because they wouldn't like the word boat. They'd have changed it. Or it'd have been a train by now, because they, they don't want the gender boats and they wanted to change it to something else, you know. You can't. You cannot change it. If you change it, it isn't that poem anymore. But if you know that poem, every time you think of it, the words are identical to the first time you heard it. What about this statement? Isaiah 40 verse 8. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. And that was written over 2,000 years ago and every time you read it it's the same nothing has changed God is not trying to change things God is a person who wants to set things right the first time you know God doesn't change things in your life you'll see this in a sec he, does, he doesn't change anything in your life if there's something going wrong at the moment in your life and it seems to get better he hasn't changed anything he's just got you away from where you were back to the original plan it was always there he's just dragged you back to the original plan Ephesians 1 verse 4 says just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love how come you know that one? It was written ooh, a couple of thousand years ago. How come every time, I don't know about you, but every time I open my Bible, the words are the same. Is yours the same? 
Every time you open the Bible, the words are still the same. Nothing has changed. Why? Because it's a poem. And every time you read a poem, no matter how long it takes, or how long you neglect it, the next time you pick it up, the words will still be the same. William Wordsworth uh, poem. You will never see it written, a host of golden roses, no matter how rosy, how wonderful roses are. Because if you did, <coughs> it wouldn't be William Wordsworth's poem anymore. It would be somebody else pretending. What about Ephesians 4? And my God shall supply all your need. No, it doesn't say all my need. You can personalize it, but the Bible says, all your need, according to riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to be careful with the Bible, that we remember it correctly. Because Paul is speaking to the Philippians and saying that. He said, because you've been good, because you've been kind, and you've been gathering money together, and when we came, you gathered this money, and you gave it to us for the work of the ministry, that's why my God shall supply all your need. This is why it is important that we give into the work in the ministry because he wants to be able to supply all our needs. 1 Peter 2, 24 Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. It still says healed. Every time you read it, it still says healed. That's why it's important for us to read the Bible and know what the Bible says. But I see a pattern here. Do you see a pattern that every time you look at a bit of poetry, the words are still the same? That's why some of you, I mean, granted some of you may not have heard of those poems I used as an example, but those of you who did, you knew exactly what that word was. Not just because you remembered it, but because it hadn't changed. If every time somebody read I wandered lonely as a cloud, the word had a different flower on the end of it, you'd never know what it was, would you? But because it's a poem, it can't change. You are God's poem. And what he said about you cannot be changed. Every time he looks at you, he sees the same blessed, healthy, victorious person he always has. He never sees any change in you. Because he knows you are what he created you to be. Because he wrote a poem about you. I don't know about you, but I like poetry. I like reading it. I don't read it as often as I used to, but I've got a, lot, a whole Bible here. Yeah, I don't know if you've looked in Psalms recently, a lot of them are like little poems. Beautiful little statements from God, usually about us. And I know that when we read them and understand them, and we take on board the fact that if you remember that it's a poem, you'll know it can't change. So no matter what the circumstances are that are going on around you, the poem's still the same. You may have a, a, I mean, I know that ladies, not in this country anyway, gentlemen don't usually change their name, but when ladies marry, they take their husband's name. You change your name. But if you wanted to, you could still put nay and put your maiden name after it. It hasn't gone. It's just not used at the moment. But it's still there. And when you've changed your name, you've changed your name legally and everybody has to call you that even if somebody doesn't like their name they change it by deed poll once it's been changed legally nobody has the legal right to call you anything else yeah when God has given some word about you and he's written a poem about you nobody can change it it can't be changed it's impossible God wants you to know that he wants you to know that what he's written about you the poem he's written about you can't be changed. Now, like I said before, I've written some poems and God got me to write another one today. Would you like to hear God's poem? 
you are God's poem. I loved you even in the womb, before your day of birth, and watched you try to overcome the struggles of this earth. My love declared a better plan for you to live your life. My Jesus came here as a man for you. He gave his life. Then one day you confessed the truth that Jesus died for you. He saved you and restored your youth. That miracle is true. Now enemies may come and tempt but you can fight at length for you for of defeat you are exempt I've given you my strength my precious spirit came within your life to bring you peace he'll help you stay away from sin and live a life of ease before I ever made this world I wrote your future down so take the Bible every word and make each one your own now go and tell your fellow man what I've done for you and as you tell them of my plan they will receive it too <laughs> See, now that, those words are all not exact quotes but you can trace every word in that from the Bible itself most of them from that passage in Ephesians see God wants you to know he hasn't just written about you he has written you you are his poem and every time he looks at you he sees the same victorious, blessed, happy, healthy glorious person that he created and when you're feeling that this isn't true read your poem read what he's written about you tell the devil tell the world tell yourself that what he's written about you is more important than you believe or more important than anybody else it's not important what other people think it's important what God thinks and it is such an encouragement to me to know that every time I read the Bible the words are the same I know that sometimes I read the Bible and I think how did you sneak that verse in there but Lord I've never seen it before but it wasn't because I didn't see it before because I know I've read every word in the Bible over the years every single word and sometimes you will just get a message in the Bible you've never seen before but it was always there God wants us to read our Bibles get to know them get to know the Bible and especially what it says about you so when the devil tells you something negative you can say well that doesn't apply to me because God says I'm exempt defeat I can't be beaten because he's already won the battle and you're a defeated foe devil so push off in Jesus name and he will sneak off and leave you alone he'll come back but for that time he will just shuffle off his snakiness and, and just you know just leave you alone because he doesn't have any authority over you actually he has no authority over you your life is already written your poem is already written down it cannot be changed and every time you should look at it every time God looks at it it's the same just like Wordsworth poem those words there they're still the same as they ever were because it's a poem and once you write a poem down it cannot be changed what God has written down in the Bible about you cannot be changed it's impossible you are victorious people you are blessed you are healed no matter what your body's telling you if your body's telling you anything else I'll tell you what it is lying to you I remember that when I was in Germany that you know eyes streaming, nose running, coughing and spluttering and my friend says to me do you want a lemsip? I'm having one of these hot lemsip things would you like one? I said no thanks I'm healed he said oh come off it this is just before he got saved I said, he said oh come off it he said you're coughing and spluttering your eyes are watering your nose is running how can you say you're healed? I said I'm saying the Bible says I am healed 
my body says I am sick. One of them is lying. I pick my body as the one that's lying because I am healed. Now the following morning I had no symptoms and he was still taking Lemsip. Nothing to do with me or anything, but I was declaring the word of God in it. I was declaring my poem. I didn't know that then. I was declaring part of the poem that God's written about me because he said every one of us is healed. And then I stood on it and it became a reality. Now I know that God can do that for every one of us. So be encouraged. God's on your case because he wants to bless you in ways you can't even imagine yet. So be blessed in it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.